Welcome back to the advisory deck. Here we are in uh, 2021 and uh, we're bringing these short videos to you once more for SME leaders and business owners really to try and talk about topical, important uh, concepts and ideas that leaders should be on top of and thinking about and exploring in a deeper way as they navigate the year ahead. I'm joined again by my partner in crime, James McGill from Chatham Capital Exchange. How are you, James? Oh, brilliant, thank you, Troy. Good to hear in the beautiful boardroom on Hutt Street. And we have another special guest here with us today. This is Chris Organ uh, from Future Projects. How are you, Chris? Never better, thanks, Troy. Good to hear. Yeah. Right, we've got a fired up panel of experts here today. The reason we brought Chris in for this conversation here uh, is Chris, and I'm going to let Chris give his elevator pitch, which is a challenging thing to do, but if I can quickly perhaps touch in your background, Chris, um, and I'll get it right, I've got the piece of paper, former Chief Technology Officer from the Health Fund sector, former consultant, uh, an IT manager from a range of, of different spaces, and now running your own business uh, in future projects, um, helping clients with strategy design, uh, innovation and project management. Is that a fair snapshot? Uh, yes, Troy, that's pretty good. Um, okay. Yeah, um, the focus um, on, of the business is on what we call enterprise design, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, bringing together the different elements of an enterprise and their interconnections together, um, and um, putting together a design that delivers on its purpose or business intent. Okay. So, you could, you could um, um, classify that as a, a better customer experience or a better internal efficiency. And it's always better to look at things in a more holistic manner mm -hmm. about how the enterprise as a whole is delivering on those, on those goals or, those, or that mission. Um, or from an internal efficiency perspective, again, how the people, the process and the technology come together to deliver on that business intent. Okay, fantastic. I know it's not an easy thing to wrap up in 30 seconds and we brought Chris in today because I think the areas that you work on with businesses are so relevant to an SME owner, um, whether that's deeper questioning before you jump into whatever new initiative, whatever improvement you wanna bring into your business, really applying scientific methodology uh, to what it is that you're actually doing. Um, and then the experimentation uh, aspect of that, which I, I find particularly uh, fascinating as well. So um, maybe I'll, I'll let you explain a little bit about that sort of deeper questioning and then experimentation. Can you give us a, a maybe a practical idea of how that would look when you're going into support a, a, an SME? Sure. Um, typically off the back of a strategic planning exercise or a goal setting exercise is, uh, I don't think there's any shortage of ideas or um, goals about where a business is targeting or where it wants to be, whether it's a, uh, a, new, a new market, new product or service, um, improving the way it's operating. Um, how to get there is the wicked question. And, um, um, and I guess typically um, ideas are sort that come, that come from experience, previous experience or um, um, experiences of, uh, of colleagues or friends or um, like businesses. Um, and there's an enormous investment in business cases and that can be quite expensive and take quite a long time and I guess what's happening there is you're betting on a single idea that may or may or not deliver on um, on, on on the goals that you've you've set. So um, my approach is I guess looking things a little bit differently, investing more time in getting some hands-on experience with, with 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 multiple different solutions, and then the one that has the greatest propensity to succeed is going to bubble its way to the surface. Um, and that's the one to invest in. Um, that's the one that you can you, you can evolve and adapt and improve over time. Um, and, and, and that's a different approach, I guess, to uh, coming up with an idea, writing a big business case, and then finding out halfway through project delivery or when it's delivered that it's not delivering the outcome that you originally intended. Mm -hmm. Makes great sense to me, James. You would see this, I see this all the mm -hmm. time in strap planning sessions. We land on something because we think that's the one way, that's the right way, but the rigor behind the experimentation mm -hmm. and testing a few different options, not always there. It, it is, and I'm keen to ask, we, we were speaking before about having a script of questions, which we don't tend to do, it's kind of a theme, uh, and then we throw that out and just start having conversations. So I want to throw out a kind of 
preconceived uh, questions we had, and I'll ask you to explain how, it's a, a scenario, strategic planning day, there's a, a CEO or a board member, which is often the case, owner of the business that says, this is a great idea, we should go and do that, um, without necessarily any rigor behind it, without business casing it, uh, and then somebody gets charged with going and making that happen. Right, so it's a, a fairly common scenario, and it can be politically sensitive to say to someone, that's a crazy idea, you know, because it's the CEO or the board member. How would you engage in that process, and how long, how long is a piece of string, but how long does it take you with your approach to figure out what it will cost to deliver a project, what are, what are the risks and the issues and the best way of going about it, versus doing all the business planning and then getting into it? Is, is it 90% quicker than a traditional way of going about something, 50% quicker, is it completely difficult to answer because every scenario is different, but can you talk us through that process? Sure. Um, I guess a good way of looking at it is an investment in time. Um, so there's an investment in time in writing a business case, or an investment in time in running a series of experiments to then inform what the business case should be. Um, typically, um, uh, in order to get a really great solution, you need to really answer a, a really thought, well thought through question. Mm -hmm. In order to get that question right, is, is spending the time to do a bit of a deep dive into um, maybe understanding why that board member or CEO has come up with that answer. Um, and through that analysis and investigation is, um, is getting to the root cause of the problem or the, the, the intent of the solution that was preconceived. Um, and, and typically a great way to go about doing that is engaging um, different disciplines within the business, um, simulating, um, simulating and investigating um, maybe looking at things from a customer perspective or looking at things from different perspectives in order to really understand, you know, what the, the, what the, the solution is trying to solve and then understanding what the question needs to be and maybe redefining that question in a way that helps the business to come up with better ideas about how to solve it. Um, through that analysis, um, um, it can open, I guess, people's eyes as to um, maybe, maybe they'll jump to a solution um, from previous experience or because they've read something in a glossy magazine in the Qantas Lounge um, or maybe their, their colleague or um, like business down the road has done it in a particular way and while they might, that might suit them, um, what's good for, for, the, for this business may be something very different. I wonder whether there's also that sort of sense of confirmation bias that we, we, we did it last time this way. When we did the strap planning, we brought the facilitator in, we had a priority in customers, we had a priority in systems and processes, we had a priority over here in HR, and we'd been thinking about some of the problems in isolation, and so we've defined strategy in isolation. But I know one of the things you focus on is systems thinking and, and really thinking, particularly important in an SME where we don't have massive delineated departments yep. in our organisation, um, you know, thinking more holistically. Can you give us a bit of, I guess, an insight into how you help leaders approach systems thinking? Sure. Um, I guess systems are about purpose. Um, there are bunch of elements that uh, join together in some way with a set of rules that deliver on some sort of outcome that maybe the business wants and um, or it's a service that's being provided such as transport system. Mm -hmm. So whilst the customer might only think of it as buses, um, when you look at a transport system it's a, a mixture of buses, drivers, schedules, um, road rules, um, support systems like maintenance and servicing, um, and recruitment training. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the system as a whole, um, um, all of that comes together to deliver on a great outcome for the customer. And that is a, a safe journey, a journey that's on time and predictable, um, that you know, is, all, is, is low cost. So all of these immersion properties come from great system design. Mm -hmm. um, and it happens over time. It doesn't normally happen from the get go. Um, so um, when I think, I guess, thinking about things in systems, when it, whether it's a great customer experience or a really good internal efficiency done deliberately, and it's done holistically, about thinking about what the system needs to do 
um, what its purpose is and what all the elements that come together to deliver that on that purpose. And that deliberate design then, you know, hopefully delivers the outcome that, that, that you're looking for. Um, that outcome that you're looking for is another great way to look at what does the system need to do and what's the meaning of success, what, what's the definition of success. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're running your experiments or you're, 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 you're building your system, you've always got the end goal in mind, which is it needs to deliver you know, things on time. It needs to be at this level of quality. Um, and that's gonna help guide the team. It's gonna help guide, provide some, you know, probably what is needed, some boundaries around what is possible and what's not and what the system needs to do mm -hmm. uh, in order to, to um, be successful. Mm -hmm. A lot of people watching this might be familiar with project management methodology, whether they're formally trained or they've just been through something, especially in corporates, it's a fairly common pathway mm -hmm. um, and can be really useful when it's done well. The problem with projects often is the scoping isn't done very well, it's hard to estimate a budget, um, stakeholder management becomes challenging. So there's, there's challenges with project methodology but done well, it can be useful. Do you see the approach that you take as sitting alongside a good project methodology, or do you see it replacing um, a traditional project plan? Um, I think the two things need to come up, come together really well in order to deliver that change. So let's say you come up with your idea, you've run some experiments and decided, okay, this, this looks like the best solution. Um, you're now able to put together um, the business case um, and the, the execution of that, the delivery of that design based on some hands-on experience, uh, which is always a good thing. And then during the course of that execution of that project, you want to make sure that your design is coming back in and checking in and make sure that the original design, um, all of the little pieces that are getting put together throughout the project are going to deliver, come together and deliver that business intent or that outcome. Right. Um, um, it's really important that those two elements come together well. So great architecture, great program management and execution. Um, and then around that, that execution is stakeholder management, great stakeholder management and all the other great, um, all the other things that are important to delivering a, a project. So, um, so, so the approach then is a, a, a way of delivering on a good outcome. So if you're, if you're a qualified project manager or someone, it's often the case, it's a, somebody in the office is tasked with delivering this project, um, like operations person, whatever it might be, this is a way that they could say, well, if I do this piece up well, might be engaging someone like yourself, but if I do this piece up front well, I can get a, a better budget, better process, better timeline, so I know in more detail what's going to happen, and then I can follow the execution of a more traditional project plan, knowing that we've got a better outcome at the end from starting with more rigour up front. Is that pretty much the way that you would see it ideally happening if, if the resources are there and the expertise is there? Yes, yeah. um, okay. the rigour I think is important, um, but also leaving it flexible enough to, to change direction if things need to change direction. Yeah. Um, so whilst the idea might be, and the, and the prototype might be sound, um, there are, to leave a left, enough flexibility in the way that you execute um, so that um, you know, if you need to, do, to make some adjustments, you make some adjustments. And that's where having the design input into, in project management and some guidance along the way is really important. And often I find that the project manager needs to have that, that nice balance of uh, design and architecture inside of the project to help guide the team as to what they need to do. So the project manager can focus on the, the controls and the administrative side and the governance side of the project. Some of the concepts that we're talking about here, Chris, are familiar to big organisations because project management departments, divisions, you know, there, there's a lot of that goes on. But I'm, I'm talking to a small business, mid-sized business owner here, smaller team enterprise who goes, I don't even know the right question to address yet. I know I need a new sort of a product line. I know we need to change something because the challenges of 2020 have meant we're really rethinking our, our business. But to land on the right question, what sort of advice or guidance or tip might you have for an SME owner to say, here's a good starting point. Here's, here's how you can kind of get to the number of what you really need to address. So, Typically, most businesses know the roundabout where their problem, where the problem is. Um, to know exactly what what it is and what needs to be done to solve it 
tends to be something that um, needs further analysis. And like I like the way that you've framed this around a question because being able to, uh, to create the right question is going to help the project team look at the ideas on ways of solving it with a lot more accuracy, a lot more confidence. Um, so typically, um, if I guess you've got a roundabout idea about where the problem is, is deploy a team, multidisciplinary team that has some experience inside of the business, have got um, different skills and, and experiences, maybe engage some people from the outside that are looking from the outside in, and, and explore in some detail, um, okay, what is this, what is, what is the problem? Um, what we could be contributing to the problem? Run some simulations, collect data, um, and then bring all of that together and, um, and with all of that information, try and construct a question which is going to address the root cause of the problem. Um, I guess the other, the other um, way to look at this is, um, I guess place, this, place yourself in the middle of the problem and, and, and do a pass at all of the influencing factors mm. of, you know, with, in trying to create some context around that problem. So um, having a look at things from the outside in, having a look at things from the inside out, mm. um, looking at what the market is doing, um, look at, looking at dissecting the actual system where you think the problem exists, um, doing interviews, um, looking what other organizations are doing and collecting, I guess, enough information for you to, to sort of orientate yourself around the problem, um, understand what is influencing that problem. And um, that will help, I guess, a great deal of really understanding what it means to you, what's important about the solution um, and, and any constraints, opportunities you might have as well around, you know, what that, that solution might look like. Because that's really important. There's no point in telling your, your, your innovation team um, come up with all these wonderful ideas because usually there's boundaries, time boundaries, there's, there's uh, financial boundaries, um, there might be other boundaries such as capability of the organisation too. You can't expect a small organisation to execute on something like this, like a very large one. Um, yet when you're working with a small organisation, there are greater advantages because they have a much more intimate understanding about more yes, parts yes. of the business, typically. Um, so I guess it's a quite a different, you could take quite a different approach each time, mm -hmm. depending on the organisation. The first thing you would normally do is, I will immerse myself in that organisation and understand the players, the culture, um, the, the customers, uh, how they're running their processes, uh, what their systems look like, um, what are the issues that people are talking about? Um, you know, are, are people coming up with ideas or are they, they're exhausted? Um, so you don't how much bandwidth? Check the suggestion box. Right. <laughs> they still exist. Yeah. Right, and also how much bandwidth has the organisation mm -hmm. got? So again, if we're going to execute on something like this, do we need to reinforce the organisation with some more bandwidth so that they can? We can clear a little bit of the day to day so that they can do something uh, in this space as well. Um, other times it might not be um, a huge team that we need to put together. It might be a single individual and go, well, look, you know, I've got this particular problem, or I need, I need to, yeah, I need to understand how I can solve this um, particular issue, mm. and uh, it might take one person with a, uh, a structured approach to pull together. Um, over a couple of days, a uh, quick snapshot of where, where you are and what sort of things you might try. And even if they're not willing to try them, uh, it'll give them a very clear understanding about what sort of solution they should be looking at. Chris, what I love about the way you're approaching this, you know, to, to ask smart, deep dive questions of what the root cause is, what the real problem actually is that we're trying to solve here, the, the analysis and the data collection from multiple facets, so important in an SME, right? Um, and, 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 and then, you know, testing, not just, okay, that's the answer, that's got to be the answer, let's put all on 32 red, um, let's test before we make those really significant investments um, and, and, and that can come out of the strategic planning process. And I think, you know, the concepts where you, you a lot of your experience, I know is in really large organisations, it fits in SME just as well, correct? It does.
Fantastic. Well, uh, there's more information uh, available from some of the resources that we're going to share with you from Chris. We didn't even get to talk about machine learning, Chris, so we're going to save that for a whole other episode um, because that's something I know you're passionate about. And again, a topic really pertinent in 2021 to SME owners and leaders too. So, Chris, super grateful for your time and insights. Thank you for being on the advisory deck. If, if you're welcome. If you would like to join us or come and have James and I come and sit on your deck, uh, uh, reach out, details down the bottom here. Um, please subscribe and share this on YouTube with anyone you think might enjoy these. And look forward to seeing you again next time on the advisory deck.